Testing one, two, one, two. I hear you. I'm not sure what's going on with the panel, but it's not picking it up. <laughs> so it's got our logo there. My canaries in in the stream. So the canaries, but when they're not seeing the panel. No idea why I can't get it to pick the pan detect the panel. But I think the canaries. Uh might nice. check in the chat anyone? Anyone in the chat hear us? You're picking up on my stream, I can hear you. Yeah, I think uh, we've got audio, but no video. But it doesn't matter. Well, you know, we're not showing video anyway. Lev's in my chat room. He said audio is good. Good, good. Hello, Lev. Yeah, welcome, people. Uh, tonight's stream is going to be a little different to the usual type of stream we do. Uh, it's more a case of detailing some other things that's going on in our lives at the moment. But we'll wait uh, till more people come in and make sure everyone can hear us. And yeah, Vian can hear us, Luca can hear us, John can hear us. Hello, guys. We've lost the panel for some reason, but yeah, the good thing yours is, is showing the map. <laughs> yeah, weird. Huh? <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, it still works. People can still hear us. That's the main thing. Because that's all you need to hear tonight, what we're saying. But uh, yeah, we'll give it five minutes, let people come in, and then we'll continue. Eh? But, yeah, good to be live again, people. We haven't been live for a while because of certain events taking place in our lives lately. So, we're going to give you some updates on these events. And then we can maybe have a chat about other things after this, but some of this is quite important. Now, we don't know if you're just all aware of what's been happening in Mon Conscience's life. Hello, Tom. But uh, we're going to speak about that first. And. Um, and we'll take it from there. Because one, one conscience is uh, also looking for advice from people that know uh, what's right and wrong with certain things that she's going to bring up. And we'll talk about that. So we're, we're good, good. Uh, we're good to go on. We're loud and clear, it seems, and it's good to hear you back, one. Thank you. And good to hear about destiny. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so I don't know um, how many people are aware, but my daughter was involved in a domestic violence. Um, incident and she's actually been dealing with this for a couple of years but you know i couldn't get her to understand um to get away from this person so um so this person beat her up really bad um he fractured her face and head in six different places and um, we took her to the emergency room and she couldn't breathe. So they intubated her and then they life flighted her to a neighboring town, which has better hospitals than my town. And from there, um, the plan was to get her breathing fixed and do reconstructive surgery on her face. And then five days into it, they took her tube out and she couldn't breathe still. Her throat closed. So um, so they went to re-intubate her and they couldn't get the tube to go back in. So the doctor 
he put a incision on her throat to put a trach in her neck and the anesthesiologist that was on scene somehow shoved the tube down her throat anyway and it caused her to aspirate so at that point everything got very very bad um, her oxygen dropped to very dangerous levels um, the doctor he was pretty much preparing me for her to pass away and um, then he tells me there's this machine called an ECMO machine and that it could save her life but that they didn't have it available at that hospital and so he was trying to get administration to allow them to bring the machine into the hospital because there was one doctor on site that could administer it it was called cannulate and um, the administration said no, that that was not going to happen. So the administration wanted my daughter just to sit there and die this very horrific death. And the doctors were very upset. And for six hours, we sat and watched her just about die her oxygen dropped down to the teens supposed to be you know in the 90s her blood pressure dropped down to um, about 53 over I don't know like 36 um, the administration kept insisting that they had to procure her a hospital and transportation before they would allow this machine to even be brought into their hospital and the doctors kept saying why can't we just put the machine on her save her and then get the the bed and the transportation and administration refused for six hours they refused and so the doctors kept fighting and working and making phone calls and after from about 3 30 that afternoon and finally at about 11 30 that night they had a, a bed in st louis and transportation secured so then the administration uh allowed them to bring in the machine and we were down to seconds of her life that's when everything was just so low that i don't know how she survived I just figure it wasn't her time and um, they put the machine on her and it, it switched everything around immediately like her oxygen went up to a hundred percent what that ECMO machine does is takes the blood out of your body runs it through a machine oxygenates the blood and puts it back into your body it's a lung life support so finally about 12 30 that night they got her on a helicopter and got her taken over to barnes in st louis um, and then she was in a coma for the next 31 days because she had aspiration pneumonia <clears throat> um, they still didn't know if she was going to survive at first but it was worth trying because she's a person and she's worth it administration did not think so and all this occurred because of domestic abuse nobody ever wants to talk about that you know not even the people that are involved in those situations want to talk about it um, but it's something I think that people do need to talk about so um, my questions kind of come about is 
shouldn't the anesthesiologist have just let the doctor do his job and not interfered and not shoved a tube down her throat and made her aspirate? And isn't it wrong and unethical for the administration to have any say of whether who gets to live and die? Good you know, question. I don't... Yeah. Huh? Good questions. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where, you know, my questions come in. I don't know if anybody knows anything about medical malpractice and if it sounds like that is, because it sounds unethical to me, you know, I lived it, so I'm biased, but, you know, I don't think that an administration, just the business people of the hospital should have any right in what is, is or isn't able to be given to people if it's able to be given to them and it will save their life isn't that the hospital's job to do so without question is as far as i'm aware of one that's, what, that's what they that's what they exist for isn't it that's what i thought so it seems a political kind of move that doesn't it it does like a bunch of red tape. So what's politics doing in the hospital? It the shouldn't. Question, it? Yeah, it shouldn't at all. It shouldn't exist in a hospital. That's not what they're there for. Yeah. So there's one con one consciences question, people. You know, is this medical malpractice? Are people aware this takes place? It's, has it happened before? It, by the sound of it, it probably has. It sounds like it has. It's something, you know, someone wants to do an investigation into the hospital and their practices. Yeah. To me, anyway. So that sounds well out of order for people that's there to save your lives. Yeah. But, you know, that must be a terrible thing to go through. Watching a lot unfold. Yeah, it was quite traumatizing. All of it. Um, from the point that I picked her up being beat up all the way through all of that. You know, there's points I can't even close my eyes without seeing her. Yeah. Yeah. Traumatizing. Yeah. That's yeah. why we haven't been active for the last month or so, people, because uh, one's got this thing going on, and there's events in my life that are interfering with mine. The which one we may or may not get into later, but we'll let's get through ones first. Well, Vian said, can I get legal advice? Yes, I'm actually waiting on a lawyer to call me back about it because, you know, I think what they did was wrong. Um, all the way from the anesthesiologist shoving a tube down my daughter's throat when an incision was already made by her her doctor, the one who was overseeing her, um, all the way up to the administration who should have never had a say about a machine that there was a doctor on hand to be able to use. They shouldn't have let her lay there for six hours dying with her oxygen dropping you know, stuff like that can cause brain damage. Yeah. Which, you know, she's she's doing good. So I'm blessed and grateful that it wasn't her time. You know, truly, I feel like for whatever reason, when that machine went on and I saw everything turn around, I actually felt like it was a miracle. Like, just occurred because I was really prepared for the worst. They even had a chaplain come in and pray over her body. <clears throat> yeah, so, Luca, she's home. Situation. Yeah, she went to Barnes, so she got in way better hands as soon as she got to St. Louis because that's one of the best hospitals in the United States. And um, she actually recovered after her induced coma. She um, recovered and got released in 11 days. She was completely healthy before all this happened. 
you know, there was absolutely nothing medically wrong with my daughter. She was fine. She's a 27 year old lady. And, uh, you know, now she's released and she's working on recovery. She still has some things that need to get better, but no need to be hospitalized. Great news. Yeah. 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 So, so that's what I've been doing is staying at different hotels in St. Louis for the last, well, I was there 41 days and we've been home for like a week now. So, great news. Great, great yes. to take you back. <laughs> That's uh, what one's been going through, people, um, for the last month or so. But yeah, you know, there is. she does want advice. And anyone hey, else Jack. thoughts on the matter? Sorry, Jack said she was in the other chat. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jack. Hello, Jimbo. Oh, Jack, I'm hard. sorry to hear that. Thank you. And it was awful. Yeah. Not, not a nice situation to be put in. Yeah, her spirit is very strong. She's a fighter one. Yeah, she's a little redhead all the way through and through. Like <laughs> she she has the redheaded spirit. <laughs> yeah. Great to hear. And give her a big hug from me. Definitely. And the people in the chat. Is this perpetrator arrested, VN what asks? Oh, yes. He is arrested and he is charged with um, attempted murder and domestic assault with a strangulation. Yeah. You do have a strong justice system over there when it comes to that. Well, somewhat. They like to plea people down, and that's my fear, is they're going to plea him down. Um, I hope they don't. So just in case, I wrote a journal every single day of what she had to go through to give to the state's attorney in hopes that they don't plea him down. And this isn't a one-off thing, one, is it? Say what? It's not a one-off event that's happened, is it? No. He's, he's attacked her before, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been attacking her off and on, more on, for the last two years. Why she continued to stay with him is beyond my understanding. But, um, you know, she, she, he made her rely on him um, financially. You know, he made her feel like she was just, shit and you know just no self-esteem at all you know he gave her control freak then he was he didn't want her to do anything with anybody ever you know he would go through her phone and and that's what set this off was he somehow got her in the car on her way to work and went through her phone and realized because they had been broke up they had been broke up for a little while but um he found out that she, this guy was texting her showing interest in her and uh that's when he decided to beat her almost to death <laughs> it was a build-up it started out small you know, at first he was actually a really nice guy, and uh, he had me fooled, and uh, and it started out small pushes, slaps, and then she turned up with a black eye, and he would always apologize, and then she turned up with two black eyes, and he was still sorry, and... Then he got her to move to another town, and that scared the crap out of all of us because we couldn't even help her because she was an hour and a half away. 
And then I still went and picked her up a few times when he had attacked her. And she'd had him arrested a few times, but they kept letting him out with just a slap on the wrist. And um, I think after that, she gave up on trying to tell the police about it. Wow. And just dealt with it and looked at it like it was normal. You know, was alcohol involved? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think he was drinking that day. I know they both drank, but uh, I don't think he was. It was a, it was at noon on a Saturday. It was like eleven fifteen in the morning. It was 12 when I picked her up. Or 12 when I got her to the hospital anyway. No, he's just a psychopath. Just a complete psychopath with zero remorse. Yeah, it sounded like... Yeah. I just hope they give him the max time and don't plea it down because sometimes they like to plea stuff down, you know people being arrested and it's it's all political yeah you know being that it's probably getting close to um you know voting i think for some of our local stuff maybe they'll go harder on him fingers crossed yeah but yeah he's a true psychopath when i picked her up he Walked her out of the house. She couldn't see. Her eyes were both swollen shut. And uh, he was smiling. He was smiling like he was proud of what he had done. And when I asked him, I jumped out of the car to grab her. I asked him, what the fuck did you do? He smiled in my face and spit on me. Spots at you? Yeah. Yeah, he was. He seemed proud of what he had done. Unreal. Yeah. So yeah, it was definitely a bad deal. But yeah, that's kind of what I've been dealing with and trying to get past it so I can get back to normal, you know, <laughs> and go back to work. <laughs> But yeah, I guess the worry now is, you know, like you said, one, you know, are they going to be lenient or not? Yeah. I'm kind of hoping they're not. So. Anyway. That's well, about all I have to talk about, really. Kind of leaves you speechless, doesn't it? It does. I couldn't talk for a long time, actually. Yeah, well done on bringing it out today. Yeah. It needs to be brought to light. There's, you know, a lot of people that deal with these things on a daily basis, and it doesn't matter what kind of a household you come from or what your race is or how you were raised. It doesn't matter. You know, it could, you could be a doctor, a lawyer, a police officer, you could be homeless, you could be a drug addict, you could be anything, and you could still be faced with these situations. Yeah, that's the reality of it. Yeah. So it's a cross section of society, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And people don't talk about it, they just keep it quiet, keep it hidden. It's like the monster in the closet. Nobody talks about it. But, you know, people should understand if they're in this situation and it's very just small or it starts out slow. It could get worse and it could get really bad. And, you know, if you know somebody like that, you can't push them. You can't talk them out of not staying because I tried that. So I really don't even know what you can do to help. Because I tried everything, and it took her almost dying before she opened her eyes to see that this 
wasn't okay. Yeah, that he really did mean to harm. Yeah, because every time I tried to push her, I just seemed like I pushed her away from me. Yeah. You know. I think that happens a lot more than people realize these situations that you know women it's even some men are supposed to find themselves in. Yeah. With no one to turn to, but you know, the family's probably like, you know, you've done you've advised it before and they just don't pay attention. They probably to think nothing's gonna happen to them. Right. And it's crazy because she knew. She knew that it was gonna happen again. I don't know why she stayed with him. Um, she just thought it was okay. You know, maybe she just felt like she didn't deserve better, but now she knows she does, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And I'm she... grateful. Yeah, well done on speaking about it, one. You know, it can't be an easy thing to speak about this. You have to put yourself outside of it to speak about it, don't you? Yeah, definitely. My dog, hold on. Okay. Yeah, it seems um, when she was starting to get away from him, that's when he turned nasty. He was losing control over her, wasn't he? That's what it seems to me now. So, yeah, it's definitely a control freak thing, that. Yeah, he knew, Luca. That's what you described class as an evil man. To abuse someone like that. Yeah. That's just evil, isn't it? It is evil. My daughter ended up, my youngest daughter went on the news and, uh, She talked about it, too. She's better at talking about things than I am. Um, out in public, anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A difficult situation for yeah. people in that position. But that's why yeah, one conscience uh, wants to do a live tonight, people. So, you know, maybe maybe this information and advice might help someone else before it gets to that point with them. Yeah, it could be. But like I said, even I still don't know how to get through to people that are faced with things like this. You know? Yeah. Well, you've, you've been there. You've tried it, didn't you? I tried and there's nothing, no words. So I think the person just has to realize that their worth is more than that kind of life. Yeah. I'm not sure what the chatters think of it either. <laughs> you know, looking at the comments, I think everyone's just speechless. Yeah, it's a lot to take in, and it's a lot to talk about. Luke has got the best idea. Yeah, I like Luca's idea. I <laughs> like <for> Luca's idea. <laughs> Let's just take it upon ourselves to deal with it. Hand him over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unbelievable yeah and it seems like this actually happens a lot around my town like there's a lot because around the time that that happened to her another poor girl was stabbed repeatedly by her boyfriend like I don't know what the heck is wrong with people these days you know and um, 
What happened, to good old, what happened to good old fashioned arguments? Right, just argue yeah. and get it over with. And then if you're that unhappy, leave for a few hours. Yeah, walk away. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then a few, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago, another poor girl was beat to absolute death by her boyfriend. And I don't think that he, I'm not sure if he even went to jail. I don't think they caught him. They may have. I didn't. The news doesn't tell you that kind of stuff. They only tell you the horrible stuff, and then they don't really follow up with it. Mm. Yeah, it seems to be more common than you think. And yeah, I agree with Jax. The woman is kind of blamed. When the newspaper put her story out, um, they kind of made it seem like she was just another woman, another statistic. And that's what actually made my daughter go to the news and speak out to speak upon my my oldest daughter's behalf that it's not her fault. And my daughter says that too, Jax, that she's ashamed and she's embarrassed are the words that she uses, that she put up with it and she didn't want people to know. And now everybody knows. And I told her there's nothing to be embarrassed about or ashamed because these weren't her choices. You know, although her choice to stay and keep going back may not have been the best choice. Yeah. It's over now. And it's not her fault because she didn't make the choices to be a demon. You know, she didn't do that. And yeah, the press, they ran with it before anybody even told us they were going to. And they printed her name. And it was kind of horrible and shocking to be sitting in the hospital and see that they printed this whole story with her name and the way they put it. And that's what made my youngest daughter go do an interview to stick up for her sister, yeah. you know, that she's not just a statistic, that she is a person and she has feelings and she's important to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A human being. Yeah. Human beings should not be trapped this way. Exactly. Yeah, it does leave me speechless, one. I mean, I'd probably get the channel taken down, uh, you know, for voiced my opinion on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I stand. Yeah. yeah, I agree. If the person is a famous person, then it's all holy and important. But if you're just a normal, everyday person... You know, you don't matter. It's important to you people is the signs to look for. Yeah. You might, you might, you might just save someone's life. Although you tried one and, you know, it didn't really help you much, did it? But luckily she pulled through and she's back home. Thank God. Like, honestly, she, <clears throat> you know, it wasn't her time. And I'm grateful because I just don't think it can be your time and be that close to death and then survive. So. I can't, you know, I can't believe how this hospital operated. The first one that they took it to. I'm sorry, my dog's barking while. Yeah, I was just saying, one. I can't believe how this hospital operated. You know, the, the first one that they took, they took it to. Yeah, completely unethical. You, you don't imagine a hospital behaving like that, do you? No, I never in a million years would have thought that. Is this what the world's coming to politically? I mean, it's, you know, politics has got into the hospitals. We know that with 
this bullshit thing that's going around, don't we? Yeah, they have. Oh. And it's crazy because politics should not make medical choices, period. Those doctors signed that Hippocratic Oath and they should have the right to make all the calls oh. because they're the ones that signed it and said the Hippocratic Oath and they're the ones that are trained to do treatments and, and make these decisions. Nobody else. Yeah. Period. Administration shouldn't say shit about what they decide. No, no. Even that's wrong, Jax, isn't it? You know, a points list, what Jax has just listed there. Even that's wrong. Doesn't matter your background, you're a human being. Exactly. Because this could be any background. Yeah. You know. This could be anyone's daughter. Yeah. Or mother yeah. or sister. Yeah. Could be anybody. And it doesn't even have to be violence because it can start out more of a mental and emotional thing and then lead into the violence. Sounds like they got even more violence uh, when she, you know, you said they split up and she was starting to get her own life back. Yeah. Yeah, that's when he really started to come unglued. Yeah. yeah. So he realized he'd lost control, didn't he? Yeah. He could not control her and her choices anymore. You know. And then someone else was showing interest in her. Someone that maybe would show her that not all guys are like him. Hey, Baron. How's it going, Matt? Hey, Baron. If you're late arriving, people, you can rewind the stream and have a listen. We're just detailing what's been taking place in one consciences and a daughter's life the past several weeks. And hopefully the stream can help others that's in them kind of situations. Yep, and she's doing better now, and um, we're trying to build towards getting her, you know, her own place where she doesn't have to be reliant upon anyone, you know, yeah. besides herself. And of course, our, uh, our, you know, we'll help her because we're her family, but, you know, she needs her own things because he supplied everything and she needs to get her own house because everything was his and when she did leave she lost everything he wouldn't give her anything so I don't even think he gave her all her clothes back when she left he doesn't wear them does he I don't know <laughs> 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 uh, sorry, I had to get that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know at this point. Don't a lot of serial killers like wear women's clothing? <laughs> yeah. It's a good job we've got a sense of humor on, isn't it? Uh, you know, that's, that's what keeps us humor. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's it, Baron. We're going to focus on the world around us. Yeah. Never mind what's on TV, sort your world out first. You have to adopt Luca now, one. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good, he makes good pizza, apparently. We'll have to put that to the test someday, <laughs> won't we? Yeah. <laughs> we can test that. Luca's famous pizza. 
in Springfield, we have a Lucas Pizza. Oh, wow. He's got shops everywhere, this guy already. All the way in America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fancy that. Yeah. Sorry, Luca, you're out with jobs. Some other Luca beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, well done there, one for going through all that. Yeah. Well, well done to her. She's the one who fought it. I sat and looked yeah. at her and watched her screens and stared at her and kind of did some inside searching and soul searching of, you know, uh, you know, I, I still don't know. Is she able to talk at one? Uh, she can, but her vocal cords are still damaged. I'm not sure if it was, you know, when they shoved that second tube down her throat. We'll have more testing coming up to see, you know, what the damage is and is it repairable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, she still has pneumonia a little bit. She's healing. Um, she'll still have to have her fractures looked at one more time. Even though, after all of everything else that happened, they never did do facial reconstruction. They actually healed. They started healing on their own before they could even consider doing anything with her because she couldn't undergo any surgeries. Otherwise, she probably would have passed away. She wasn't strong enough. And um, she's weak. So... She needs to get strong and be able to uh, walk stronger and not be so shaky. You know, work on her fine motor skills a bit. It takes a lot out of you, I guess, when you sleep for 31 days. <laughs> yeah. Coma, really, isn't it? It is. It was a medically induced one, yeah. But that's what it was. Um they just like to use the word sedated so you don't hear the word coma and freak out. Yeah. Even though everybody knows what it is. <laughs> they, just, uh, yeah. they don't want it to sound so bad. So <laughs> it does help as well, doesn't it? Yeah. It, I mean, it does. And, and they had her heavily sedated. Like they had her on, I think at one point she was on 10 different medications, um, painkillers and, different sedations and um, if they lower them just a little bit she try to wake up which was kind of crazy because she should have never woke up under that kind of medication and uh, but she was strong and healthy and it took a lot to keep her down I mean it really did <laughs> <laughs> then when she woke up she's like trying to mouth out words that she's leaving and like well no no you're not <laughs> <laughs> and she woke up full of fire and then when she could talk a couple sentences in she said after she realized how long she'd been asleep she said see what happens when you let me sleep for a month <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, uh, fair enough. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Is she standing and walking? Luca asks. Yeah, yeah, she's standing and walking, um, you know, slow, but she's getting good. I just help her with things that she can't quite do and then you know, they took her trach out, so that's healing. And uh, I think her biggest fumble is trying to open, like, bottles of water. For some reason, that function isn't quite working yet very well. She's not strong enough to turn a bottle uh, cap. Yeah. But... Other than that, she's doing all right. She she gets tired easy, obviously. Of course, she still has pneumonia. That'll take time to heal. Her, when, when we got there, 
they diagnosed her with something called ARDS. And survival rate is not very high. So we're lucky that she was so strong and healthy to begin with because that's probably what helped her survive that she had no underlying illnesses so actually it's, when you think about it one it's lucky you were there because these people would have took decisions that would have gone went against your decisions wouldn't they if, they, if you weren't there yeah at springfield yeah i don't think they would have done that in st louis um, but in springfield yeah i don't they would have just probably let her die if I wouldn't have kept, you know, um, if I wasn't there. I don't think they would have went to the extremes they did to save her. That's sad, isn't it, that? So, yeah, my advice one, yeah, sue the ass off them. Because politics should not exist in that kind of a facility. I agree. Like, it has no place in choosing what has to do with people's lives. Yeah, Life or death doesn't. And they had no problem, you know, saying no. And even the doctor was upset. He wasn't the one even making the bad choices. Even when they made her aspirate, he wasn't the one that made the bad choice. It was the anesthesiologist, which in my opinion had no place pushing a tube down her throat when he had already made an incision to do an emergency trach. And that was his his educated choice. And he he was on the right track because if he would have just done that, she wouldn't have aspirated because a trach goes under your vocal cords, not through them. And when that anesthesiologist shoved the tube anyway, it went through her closed vocal cords. And now I think there's damage, permanent damage to her vocal cords because her voice is very um, hoarse and raspy still. And it should have recovered already. She's been awake for... Um, she has been awake for over two weeks. She was awake 11 days when they let her out. And now she's been awake 18 days. So, yeah, she should have already recovered. Yeah, and that might just... Hmm. She, she might, that huh? Definitely pursued that then, yes. Yeah, I'm waiting on a, a lawyer to call back um, to see what they have to say about it. Because... I feel like they did something wrong. I don't think they made the right choices. And knowing some kind of political administration, they're probably going to throw that anesthesiologist under the bus rather than take the hit theirself. That's what they do, don't they? Find a, yeah. fall, find a fall guy. Yeah. And I still think the anesthesiologist did wrong, but I think they did wrong too. But I don't know if, if anything we say or do will be able to get to people like that. Yeah, Jack said it there. Look, she thinks the same. If there's no family present, nobody pushes them into action. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Because that doctor had to look me in my face the whole time because I wasn't leaving. Yeah. And then more family showed up. And so he had to look them into their faces and then and i don't know nobody knows my youngest daughter but let me tell you she is not someone that you would want to tangle with because she will continue to ask questions until the right answer is given to her and that's exactly what she did to that doctor she stood there and looked him in his face and asked him question after question after question after question he had to do something yeah because she knew what she was talking about and she floored him like he was stumped that she was so knowledgeable knowledge is power it is so it made me feel a lot better when she showed up she was 
there for her sister and there for me. Well done, daughter, too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They got a nice family there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yep, but if I wouldn't have been there, I don't know how it would have turned out. I just knew I couldn't leave her. You know, I just had a feeling like, I had to be there. Yes, she was in terrible shape, but some people would be like, well, I could go home and then come back. You know, especially the first hospital it was only 45 minutes from home. It would have been easy to leave and then come back. But something told me not to leave. So I didn't. I sat there the whole time. And then when she went to St. Louis, there was no freaking way I was leaving. I was there with her the whole time. So, well, I take that back. I did come home for one day and have Amila's second birthday. Hey. <laughs> so she turned two. And <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Baron says healthcare systems are useless without family getting involved. Yeah. 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 So that's the reality of some of these institutions, people. You know, who's who's really running the show here? That's the question one, isn't it? Who's running these hospitals? Yeah. It's the administration, it is. I found that out in a hard way. Yeah. Yeah, so the doctor, he didn't give up, though. He did the right thing. Like, I have to give him props. It was him and another doctor. And the other doctor was the one who could, you know, put the machine on. This machine is not, not everybody knows how to use it. But uh, he was there, and he knew how. And there was no reason not to get it brought in and do it, you know. And they fought, you know, till they got their way and that's if the admin even it's questionable whether or not they actually even got the admin's permission i know they secured the bed and the transport and then i don't know if admin ever even approved it i know they brought the machine in regardless and that's all that matters i know that doctors that don't usually show any emotion that doctor showed emotion and he cried he was relieved and you know, when they finally got the machine hooked up to her and her vitals turned around, he he cried. And I saw him cry and he, he was really emotional and it was, you know, kind of shocking because doctors are usually so emotionless. Yeah. There's still some humanity there. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. The dog's being a little pain. <laughs> I'm just waiting to hear the, the, the little claws on the floor there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're in a carpeted room. That won't happen this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you learned, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The old streaming days. Yeah. Uh, Jack said two years old. Yes. Little Amila is two years old and doing wonderfully. And that's the same hospital that Destiny ended up going to was the one that saved Amila. So, yeah, I have all good things to say about that hospital. <laughs> well done, the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're all about giving up before starting. You know, that's a political statement, isn't it? Yeah. They've been and told, I think they've been told or ordered to be that way. And I don't want to bring up the name of that thing that Baron brought up just there. But one of the nurses did tell me that when that thing first started, they were all so scared and they kept the doors closed on all the rooms and they had their little gadgets right outside the door. So they never had to go inside the rooms. And then he said, as time went on, they realized that it wasn't 
what they were saying. So they opened all the doors back up and went into the rooms and, you know, and everything kind of went back to normal because they realized that it was really exaggerated was his words. And this Good. was a doctor on a heart and lung ward, or I'm sorry, a nurse who was there all the time and he'd worked there 15 years and he, they dealt with those patients because that's where they would send them was into these lung wards and put them on these same machines that my daughter was on. And he said that they realized after some time passed that this thing was really exaggerated and there was nothing to be scared of just to do your normal thing. Cause you know, they wear masks anyway because yeah. they're nurses and wash your hands and they were fine and none of them caught it. So that was a little conversation we had that surprised yeah. me that he said that, but you know, he did. So yeah, exaggerated was his words. At least some of them seen him. Yeah, I think a lot of them did. They're just not really allowed to talk out against it. That shows you how bad the politics have got into it, doesn't it? Yeah, because they'll lose their jobs, and that's politics. That's not being a good uh, practitioner. Yeah. I know over here some of them lost their jobs because the few refused to have the thing. Yeah, the thing. Same here, though. People are losing their jobs if they don't get the thing. So, but we don't want channels to get pulled down. So <laughs> that's enough about that. <laughs> yeah, look at that thing over there, out the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that irrelevant thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's probably when the politics started getting worse in hospitals thinking about it. Right. So what about you? Me? Yeah. <laughs> Where do you want us to start? <laughs> I know you've been dealing with some stuff too, so now today's about real life. Okay, real life stuff in my life. Yeah. <clears throat> well, as some of you may not know, um, early last year I lost my stepdad, who was also my mother's carer, because she's had strokes. Um, he ended up in the hospital, and he was on his way out. He did have cancer. But in my opinion, they finished him off with the thing, which I left my mother by herself. And that's why when I moved, I actually moved to my mother's. I sleep at my mother's six days a week and care for my mother as a carer. Out of the you know, goodness of my heart, because she's my mum. I don't get paid for it or nothing. I didn't ask for anything. I don't expect anything. So that's what I've been doing since last year. Um, but uh, something else took place last year, later on in the year. I, um, my younger brother wasn't responding to his phone calls. So I went round to his home, kicked the door in and found him dead. The coroner says it was Western diet. His heart had stopped. It was too late for me to, to revive him. And so we had that to deal with as well last year. Unknown to probably everyone in this stream. Kept it quiet. So I've had that to deal with. And also empty in his apartment as this was ongoing. Uh, when they removed him, that's uh, empty the apartment because it was uh, well, there was no door left. They kicked the door on, so uh, to empty his apartment and take all his belongings to my home. Now, his anniversary came up this year, and my mother had two brain bleeds, stressing herself out about it. So she ended up back in hospital. 
in a, in a stroke ward. So she was in there for I don't know, a couple of weeks, and they were still blocking visits to see her. They were allowing two family members once per day to go and visit her, which is pretty poor considering the thing doesn't exist. Anyway, this was ongoing, and they lied to her that she had to have a, a thing test. They told her she had no choice but to have this test done. And then they tried to say that she had the thing. So I immediately, they rang me and told me he won't be able to visit her for another 10 days. The whole family would not be able to go to the hospital for another 10 days. So I, I rang her. I said, get yourself signed out of the hospital now and I'll come and collect you. There's no way on earth are you staying in there by yourself when none of us can see you and know what they're doing. So they lied to her and then tried to say she had the thing. Uh, so that day was spent calling them and calling the hospital, asking is she ready to be collected? Can I come and get her now? And they were dragging the heels, oh, we need a doctor to sign this, that, and the other. I says, you don't actually need to sign anything. She can legally walk out of that hospital. She couldn't walk, obviously, but she can leg legally take us, remove herself from that hospital, you know, free. No one can stop her. So if anyone ever tries to get you in a hospital and force you to have a thing test, decline it. Because they've obviously lied to you straight away saying you've got no choice, because that's what they did with my mother. So I had to, you know, go to the hospital and literally rescue my mother from this hospital and bring her home. That's what's been taking place the last couple of weeks here in my life, as well as these other events taking place and other events that I can't speak about yet because they're still ongoing. So my mother's now back home in safe hands. She's worse than she used to be. She needs a bit more care than she used to. So, you know, my, obviously other family members come in to help. So this is another reason why myself, I, why I haven't been as active as I usually am. Because so I've got this taking place. So that's been occupying my life the last few weeks. Um, that's where I'm at with some of the things going on in my life. So there's a little update from me on what's taking place in my life at the moment. And that's why I've been as active doing the research I usually do. Because obviously in real life takes priority over certain things. Even though the other thing's quite important. Yeah, you saved her life. I think we did, yes, by taking her out, removing her from that place. Because you've no idea what they're going to do to them. You can't go and visit them, you, you know. She, she was not going to get any better on the stroke count. I knew that. I said, well, you know, she's, she's getting less exercise there than she was at home. I said that right when I rang them up. I said, look, she's not going to get any better because, she's, you know, I think they give her exercise once a day or, you know, maybe once a week. Who knows? I'd have to ask her. But she was, every time we went, she was laid up in the bed. They would not, they would not give her a wheelchair so she could not get around in the ward. So she was basically bedridden. Now, it is what pissed me off about the hospital. When we first went to see her, she was lying in pools of blood. There was bits of food lying on the floor, bits of toilet tissue. The place absolutely stank of shit from you not know, just, you know, there's other patients in the, in the room. So when they were changing these patients, they were just putting the, the pads in the bin, but not taking the bin away. So all you could smell when you walked in this ward was shit. And then you would see flies crawling on it. I thought, oh my God, this is like a third world hospital. What's going on? You don't expect to see flies crawling on it over your mother in a ward stinking of shit, you know, in a modern hospital. But this is what was taking place a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, that wasn't the reason I wanted it removed. What the hell are flies doing in a ward in a hospital? 
Zeus. Well known patients. Zeus got asked her age. She's 79. I'm an angel is 79. And she loves our research. She gets it. She's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't actually spoke to her, haven't you, one? Yeah. There's she's a few there. Sweet. She's a sweet lady. It's just sweet. She is. Heart of gold. So, you know, it was rescuing out the bloody hospital. That's what I had to do. Because I, I thought we probably won't see her again if you, you let them carry on doing what they're doing. This thing nonsense. So again, you know, there's, there's politics there, isn't there? Definitely. You, you know, is is the weird part one? You know, every time we went to see her, there's I don't know, there's probably about fifteen, twenty nurses there. I never seen any one of them ever wear a mask. All the times I went to visit, not one of them was wearing a mask. Then all of a sudden, oh, she's got COVID, and they've all got masks on. What? Yeah, she's glad to be on Luca. Jax has chatted over as well, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, what my mother's going through currently. It's, you know, this is still ongoing. Um, I'm currently at my mother's now. I don't get to go on much. Uh, because for that reason, you know, I can go on, I'll go on for a few hours when my sister's here, keeping an eye on her and things, but, you know, I do miss my own family. But, you know, yes, yeah, I'm the only one that's got more free time on my hands than the rest, so I'm here doing what I should be doing. As anyone else would, have, would imagine for the mother. as it should be yeah you know this is what family is about isn't it you look after each other you look out for each other so yeah it's been a pretty traumatic year really one well, hasn't it <laughs> it definitely has definitely has now people in the, the team and uh, the ABM group, they knew about this, but you know, obviously they keep it to themselves because it's private information. But I don't mind speaking about it today. That's what we're here for, real world stuff. And at least you know now why we haven't been as active as we usually are. Because we've got other things taking place. Yeah, Heron said it there. Sorry for the terrible thing being done to our elderly. That's really what's going on. You know, I'm still worried about the, the other people in that ward. Because what they did, after they said they, she had the thing, they moved two people out of that ward and brought another two people in that are supposed to have the thing as well. So there was four people in the ward now that had the thing. All in one room. I can imagine what the plans were for them four people. Can you? I mean, hopefully the other people had family that were willing to stand up like you did. I never ever seen anyone else there. One, there's the strange thing. Uh, those poor people. Yeah. Nice people as well. You know, two of them could even speak. So who's 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 sticking up for them? Uh, I don't even like to think about it. If nobody's mm. sticking up for them, did they have the the guts to, you know, get up and walk out themselves? Well, they were probably lied to as well about having to have that test. Probably. They lied to my mother. I told them in the hospital I wasn't happy about that. I says, who lied to my mother that said she had to have this test done? That's a lie. She does not have to have any test done that she doesn't want done. You never give her the choice. You know, and that's just another example of the unethicalness that's going on in these different hospitals and stuff. Doctors and nurses are not supposed to freaking lie. Like, they are supposed to be ethical people. 
you should be able to trust them and you can't if you like that you can't can you oh i was no. i I'm bet i was fucking angry there's no way on earth they're going to stop me taking her to hospital that day what you're going to try and block me from seeing my mother for 10 days well you do what exactly i don't think so right and then all of a sudden you'd get a phone call yeah saying she didn't make it or something yeah that's where it was heading it was uh i made sure that didn't happen yeah and it does seem planned one because i had said to the doctor the day before uh you know you'd uh, i can see your stroke team's done all they can on the stroke count so why is she still in hospital i said she gets actually gets around the home more which is built around her condition than she was stuck in a bed in that ward i said she could you know do more exercise at home because it is built around her condition and he didn't know, didn't know what to say that's when he knew something was wrong i think it was planned you know, that, I asked him that the day before. So, you know, this is what's taking place in these, these hospitals. Bullshit running hospitals. Yeah. Third world standards in hospitals. Flies and stink of shit. It was unbelievable in that room. Oh, no way on earth was I leaving her there. I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. So she does recover, you know, obviously more care. She's definitely lost function she had before she went in. I don't know if they'll come back. You know, because the the trauma with my brother on her mind. She lost her husband and her youngest son the same year. That's a lot to deal with. It is. That's right, Baron. They Google the treatments. Google doctors, uh, we'll just Google it and let's see what's wrong with you. Uh, oh, we'll try you with this. Anyone ever says to you, we'll try you with this, punch them in the face. They're just trying to sell you something from Big Pharma. I know that because they used to do it with me when I used to go to the doctors. I've been to the doctors for nearly 10 years now. The side effects outweigh the cure, so why would you even risk it? So that's some of the things going on in my life, people. <laughs> that's what I usually talk about either. You know, I'm a private man, I keep to myself. But these things need to uh, brought out into the open so people can see what's really going on in these institutions. So, probably not what you expected to hear, but that's what's taking place. Who's still there one? I think I just lost you. I think we just lost one conscience off the panel. Can people still hear me in my stream? Oh, 10 second delay probably. And wait 10 seconds for a reply. Lev or Baron or anyone, can you still hear me? Slay me, Jack, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we lost one conscience there off the panel. Not sure what happened, but she might be back.
Yeah, it's not the easiest thing to talk about, VN. Gets you so angry, mate, it does. What they're doing. Yeah, but you know, this this stream, one one conscience asked us to go live and says, you know, can we give people updates on what's taking place? I was thinking of doing that anyway, just to, you know, give you all updates why we haven't been live. Uh, you know, I was giving one conscience time to make sure that was okay. There's no, you know, there's no rush. We're still here. We can still answer questions in the stream That's that we stream. But, you know, the research hasn't stopped. It's still ongoing. Yeah, it's just took a back seat at the moment. But we have, you know, more videos and updates to give you on research, which we will get into more, of course. I do miss it. But, uh, priorities and other things at the moment taking precedence. Yeah, it probably does happen more than what we know, VN. You know, I mean, for a small research team, you'll be surprised at what we talk about in our little group and how many families are affected by what's taking place in that group. We're seeing it all just in a little group of us, and that's just, you know, a snapshot of what's really going on. It's going on... Can't, I don't think people comprehend how much it, what's going on. Yeah, literally the same thing going on with everyone. Everyone's got this kind of these kind of things taking place in their lives. Uh, you know, we're no different. We're just ordinary human beings doing what we do, and sometimes real life gets in the way and bites your ass now and then. It is what it is. But we have to continue on and keep doing what we do eventually. But, you know, first things first, make sure family members are, are well and safe. Yes, same with you, Jax. Jax is uh, having the same thing taking place in their life and others in the group are having the same things taking place in their lives. We all know the bullshit. And it does affect every one of us. No exceptions. These people are never going to stop. Our research is showing you why. That's the important thing. Our research is showing the world what these people are, why are they doing this? They don't want you to wake up. They don't want you to know where you live. They don't want you to know there's a creator and what they actually created. So they can steal it. Common thieves, that's what we're dealing with. Common thieves. And all the rest of it, of course. So, you know, hopefully the world will wake up one day and realise what's really took place. I can tell you now, you know, these people invented politics, religions, the royals, and the globe. All these are inventions by this entity to hide this world and how it works and its creator. That's what's really taken place. We don't know who the creator is, but we know there is one. Oh, fake food. <laughs> Tell me about it, Baron. <laughs> There's another thing happening in my life. Fake food stuff. 
I've lost so much weight in the last year. Oh, let's not go there. You can imagine. You know, mother comes first. She needs care, so that's where I'm at. Heading to my mother. Helping where I can, doing where I can. Being with her, she's got company. She knows she's in safe hands. And that's all that matters. So, all you people, take care of your old. And your young. They're after everyone. These people want everyone. And they're not going to stop. The free world is under attack. I'm pretty sure you all know that. It's a good world coup. That's what's taking place. Well, the new world order runs just about every country now. There's the problem. They've been, they've been hiding inside our politics a long time, lying about everything. We know this. The important thing there is, you know, there is a creator and we know what the glory is. You people know what the glory is. You can go up there and see it yourself. You can't deny what your eyes show you. But they're denying you that knowledge and right to know it. Our ancestors knew it. I would record and show you that. All this sacred geometry belongs to the creator's science. Creator's technologies that run this world. Message of one, her Wi Fi went off and she can't connect for some reason. I told her to keep trying. So, yeah, one, one lost her Wi Fi. Hmm. Would you like to join the panel, Jax? And maybe speak about you know, what's taking place with you? As we'll get it all out there in one go, people. Huh? Just wait and see if Jack responds. I'll give you the link. One's uh, still trying to connect. She's lost her connection. The Wi Fi has gone off. Sabotage, possibly. Yeah, Jax wants to join the panel. Okay, I'll now just give you the link, Jax. In fact, I'll put it in the I'll put in the APM chat. So if anyone in the APM chat wants to join the panel, you're more than welcome. Uh, downside might be because um, one conscience is running the stream. I'm just restreaming it. Um, she might not be able to add you to the panel. Hmm, there's a problem. You can't connect, Jax. It's because one conscience isn't back on the panel yet to let you join. So don't worry. She's still trying to join.
Yeah, because, you know, she's hosting the stream. I'm just restreaming it. So. Until the Wi-Fi comes back on, she won't be able to connect. Now, I did mention other things taking place in my life at the moment. Um, whatever comes of it, I may need to go underground for some time. Meaning you, you will not see me for a while. That's all I can say on that matter. My team will keep you informed, don't worry. Make sure a message gets to them, whatever happens. I can hear something on the panel. Uh, want the whole internet's gone down for one. Nobody's Wi Fi is showing up at one conscience's home. And see that, people, huh? Yeah, don't worry about it, Jax. Um, when, but, you know, one has to allow people in. She's hosting the actual panel. I can't, you know, I'm not seeing you pop up, so I can't allow you in. It has to be done by one. So I stand by because, you know, whatever how much it was gone at one's home, but... No one's Wi-Fi seems to be showing up anymore at home. I'm not sure if she, if she can use a mobile or not. I told, I told her to try it. Yeah, we could start a new stream, you know. I'm available to chat longer. I'm not sure how much time one's got on her hands, but she's definitely trying to get back in. That's <laughs> past your bedtime, Jax. <laughs> He's cheeky, that Baron, isn't he? Where yeah, the panel pinging? I oh, know it wasn't. It was a message from one. Mm. Yeah, back on the stream, so she can't let you on, Jax. You know, she can't get in to let you on. How weird is that, eh? Timing. Yeah, all the Wi Fi choices are offline, one said. So it's like there's no internet exists there all of a sudden.
So yeah, I'm just relaying messages from Ron. So I'll keep chatting anyway, if you like. If you want to stay on that, those topics or change topic, just let me know in the chat. Any questions on things we were just discussed, feel free to ask them in chat. And fingers crossed one conscience gets their internet back. Am I still streaming into water? Well, is one's stream still on on her channel then? Yeah, it can't at the moment, Baron, um, until one conscience joins the panel because she has to allow people to join. She tried to get me you know, signed up for that, but because I don't live in the States, they don't allow it. How weird's that? It's supposed, to, it's supposed to be worldwide providers and this, that, and the other. And because I don't live in the States, I can't be given those kind of those kind of rights. How weird is that? But no worries, you know. We can do another stream another time if one can't make it back. It's good to get these kind of things off your chest, really. And at least you people know now what's going on in our lives and why we haven't been active as much. You know, there's not just me and one conscience in this group. There's other team members. They've got all got issues going on in their lives as well, different types of issues. In fact, everyone I know in the group's got issues, to be honest. <laughs> I try to remember that it could be worse. Yeah. Yep. Worse. Is there such a is there such a thing what could be possibly worse than what we've got going on and what's coming? Yeah. But while I've got the still the use of the panel, what would you like me to talk about, people? I'll keep talking to you know, give one conscience a chance to get back. Maybe the internet will come back on or something. Creator Earth. <laughs> Alice. Earth. Let's see where Bot comes. Well, that's the bot, eh? Bot, what do you think of Creator Earth? <clears throat> there you go. Bot knows. No, we don't follow that theory, uh, Erin. You know, we do pursue our own map and model. If you follow our research, you'll know, you know, we use the Mercator map. No one is crossing the international date lines. They fake. They flip the air, air and shipping data to appear to be crossing them, but they're really just crossing the map. 
they're not going over the date lines because if you go over the date lines, you're not going, if you went east, you will not arrive in the west and vice versa. That's what they're hiding. This, this uh, the way they've done it, pizza maps and, ah, what was that noise? It's me, I'm back. Ah, one's back. Hello, one. <laughs> right. <laughs> That was a good time. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I give Jax the link one and she clicked it, but of course you need to be there uh, to allow her to join. Because we'll really tell her to try that. again because try now, Jax. The stream's off in my channel now, but I it's fine. I just won't. Yeah, it's still running. Oh wait, it actually worry. says it's still streaming. Yeah, yeah, we're still streaming into mine. Oh, it's still streaming into mine too. Oh, excellent. Somehow it picked back up. Okay. I was just giving their in some information, you know, on our map and model. We we have proved over the last six years now what this what the correct world map. Ah uh, yes, on the more we, pleasant topics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well he was asking about Creator Earth, so you know, so you know, we we don't follow that theory because it is just a theory and there's no proof that we live in a creator or anything. Right. So, you know, our um Ah, good. Here we go. Jax is going to join. Okay. Welcome back, one. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Like the whole internet all around here went out. Nobody's Wi Fi was showing up. Weird. Bad timing, that wasn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Right when we were talking about the thing, the thing did it. <laughs> the thing. But Jax is going to join us. Says she's going to close the door and because she wakes her daughter up. Awesome. Jax has also got you know stuff going on in her life. In fact, every team member has got something going on similar in in their lives. So you know why not get all of them open now? I mean, yeah. we'll move on to other topics, but we'll keep that for a, a research night. The next one. Yeah. Oh, so I missed a lot, it seems. Mm -hmm. We continued on. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to put my Wi-Fi back on. I turned it off. That was the only way I could even message you was that I turned off my Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all back up now. Now they're popping up. We use Xfinity, and I'm assuming that something happened with Xfinity. I heard something. Administration heard... told them to switch it off. <laughs> I think. Too <laughs> much information. Um. Hey, Baron. Hello, Baron. Aha, beauty. You're beauty, mate. You'll realize in a minute. Is that better? 100% yeah. better. There you go. <laughs> How's it going, mate? Is that better? 100% yeah. better. There you go. <laughs> Sorted. Was he got that? Uh, no, I'm just trying to mute on my. Phone. Oh yeah, you better mute that watch page, Barry. Uh, no, I'm just trying to mute on my. Oh yeah, you better mute that watch page, Barry. Okay, there you go. Ah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Uh, more, more, more. Say, yeah. <laughs> Watch page not muted. <laughs> How are you, Matt? I'm all right, actually. Um, we're going to have to get some headphones, though, because I can't hear a thing. <laughs> and stomp uh, around the house and look for some headphones. I, th I thought you... Jax was going to join, and I just pressed she the button. Is, so. she, is, she is, yeah. She's just shooting doors so she doesn't make a dart up. 
So yeah, might as well, you know, get all the real life stuff out on one stream, eh? Yeah, that's good. People need to know. Anything anything you want to add on. anything you want to add, Baron, that's taking place in your life or your friends' lives or anything? Yeah, it's much of the same, you know. Peter Mum in law has been in hospital for a while now, but she's got um, my missus and her sister round the clock, twenty four seven, sleeping next to the bed. So you, you know, that's a bit. Uh, You're breaking up there, mate. But yeah, well done on the bedside vigilance. Got to remain vigilant, haven't we? Hello, Jax. Hello. Peekaboo. Hi, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. You have to mute your watch page, though, because we can hear the echo. Yeah, I've just muted it. Is that better? No, still an echo. Oh, hang on. Have I got it? I might have it on twice. If you're still watching my channel, just mute my channel. Yeah, I've muted it. Mm. You haven't got one's channel on as well, have you? So we are streaming into two channels. Is that better? Is that better? Nope, still echo. <laughs> um. I'm not sure what this is. That's okay now, Jax. Is it? Yeah, no echo now. There you go. Oh. I can hear everyone too now. Hey, you can hear you. You sound louder, Baron, now. <laughs> uh, You've got a boost. booster of Jax. <laughs> Cheers, Jax. Oh, I wonder what happened there. That was weird. Mm. <laughs> Welcome on the panel, people. Thank you all. Good evening, all. Good evening. Afternoon, evenings. <laughs> Thanks for both of you for sharing what's going on in your lives. I know all of us just seem to be going through these sort of really dramatic, difficult things at the moment. And meeting obstacles with the, with the health service along the way that, I don't know, they just do seem to be by design. They do. Yeah. There's too much power given to people that haven't received the education yeah. to be able to make the choices for people. Completely agree. Yeah. Oh, and like I was trying to say, I was trying to say before I got completely wiped out on internet, do they call you guys as doctors, like doctor family practices? Um, or do they just yeah. say like doctor? Yeah, they. I think we have more practices now. So you know, you know, they general, didn't have to. Practitioner. So they didn't used to be called that. Do you guys no. remember that? Yes. So, yeah, so yeah. when they put that name on to these doctors' offices, they're pretty much just saying, "Hey, we're just practicing on you." Yeah, yeah. Doctors' practice. You know? One here is Westbury doctor's practice and there's a yeah. whole bunch of them in there and you're assigned one yeah and when i was when i was a child we didn't have that we had here's your doctor's office he is a doctor and this is his office a and, doctor yeah yeah and they didn't have these doctor family practices where they had six seven eight doctors in this building and you're assigned one and they're all practicing like you know it's like they don't have a fucking clue what they're doing anymore and were their little test dummies well the real doctors are long gone i know that because yeah you know, when i was younger there were really good doctors around then there were they used to come out and see you properly now they just google things and say we'll try you with this 
Um, yeah, Baron no, said no, they've no, got no, their no. own special doctors, Google. Yeah, my mum was a doctor for 40 years. Um, she was a good a, one, though, wasn't she? She was one of the good guys. She was. She, she used to tell us that um, all these people are coming in. Uh, this is, she told me what placebos were. And yeah. th these are all the different brands of placebos that you can get. They look and they say that they're real medicines, but it's just sugar. And most of it was that. Uh, people have to do their research and find out. But back in the 70s and 80s, uh, the doctors would make the people better by telling them what to do. Um, and they went out to see people because if you're ill, you shouldn't be going out if you're ill, isn't it? So, you have, so people need to be visited. And But if you want some advice and you want this and that, you went to the doctor's surgery. Other people were, were oh, I can't come to the doctor because I'm ill. Well, that's why you need to go to the doctor. So there were, you know, her bosses, I think it was called the FPC, they did the deciding on who gets priority and paid doctors accordingly. Five pound a patient, 10 pound if they'd never used the services, you know, a couple of quid if they're always there. So the idea is that, oh, you need to, stop people either coming in or need more people to take the recommended medicines or what have you. Then you had the whole system of the medical reps who um, you know, represent all the companies with all the brands and they're all beta test stuff and, and recall stuff as regular as they can write prescriptions for the next thing. So she gave up because it was too much of being a business person and a drug pusher. Well done, Baron's man. Yeah. And she's still natural. I mean, she they eat like a, a handful of nuts. My mum, my dad's 93, two, and my mum's 79, 80. And they have they do take medicines that they've taken for years and years. But it's thanks to my mum titrating or whatever it's called, you know looking at the actual medicines and what they do and what's needed and what's not and filtering out anything and everything and just doing only what's absolutely necessary because there is research and medicine and this and that, that goes on to help people, but it's just misused and sold it's, it's, and it's mishandled. It's just like the same way we're using the technology now to have this conversation. It's good that we're using it in a good way, but it's mostly misused. Mm. And it's a yeah. drug, it's an addiction, and people are on the tablets and phones and tellies and YouTubes and everything. They can't get off of it. But me and you, we we know each other because of these things. Yeah. Right? And you you've shared information because of this technology. Yeah. But the majority is just misused, and that's the same as the health system and monetary system and all of them. Yeah, it just, it just, it just amazes me how why well, they're so fascinated with us. You know, it's like. I want to know everything about us all the time, don't they? They've got just, my picture up now. They, yeah. just want, they would just want rid of us. <laughs> that's, you know, that's blatantly obvious now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, like, uh, religion, they, they, they don't need you anymore, so they want to get rid and something else to take over. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Make our bodies not work the way they should with all this these chemicals. You know, if we're fine, if we're like machines and you put the wrong stuff in us, we're not going to work properly. Yeah. All these medicines do that to us. They mess up all of our chemicals, our chemistry and our brains and our bodies make you sicker. You have to have a medicine to out, you know, to get rid of the, the side effects of this medicine. And sometimes the side effects are worse than what you were just afflicted with to begin with. Yeah. The, the, you have a headache, just have a freaking headache. You don't have to take 50 pills for it. I'm constantly hearing about various medicines that get st people stop, you know, being recommended to stop a particular medicine for this reason, that reason. And one of them is called Omniprazole, I think. I don't know if I should say the brand, but that's what it is. And th th that's supposed to line your stomach before you take loads of tablets because your stomach can't, lining can't take it. So this little thing lines your stomach. That's the thing that started to call, cause people ulcers. <laughs> Just compounds it one thing after another, doesn't it? Cool, it hey, hey, we probably should change the topic anyway from that. True. Well, um, well, on the subject, because I've been so inspired by 
APMs looking into natural cures. I got, I bought um, Cole Pepper's medicinal um, herbal book, and it's from the 1600s. And I've moved into this house December last year, and this year I just let everything grow in the garden. And a lot of the stuff turned out to be medicinal. And I, I've got Solomon Seal. So I saw, I'd seen this thing and I identified it as Solomon Seal. It looks like huge lily of the valley. And in the autumn, when it dies back, you dig up its roots and it produces rhizomes, which are the shape of bones. And it's good for bones. It's, right. that's its main, it said it's like brilliant for bones and it even looks like little bones. And it did as well. I dug up some. And I did, I did put it on film. I'm going to try and get something together. I was going to show the whole process, but me being me and the way things are at the moment, it's difficult to focus, isn't it? <laughs> mm. So I dug them up and then I looked up online. It's quite difficult to find out how to um, get things together. But I had, I had to just wash it, you know, get all the dirt off. And I found some quite big ones too scrape most of the thing off and then grate it and then cover it in alcohol for two weeks and then uh, strain it and now i've got the alcohol and i just take a few drops every day and i've started that because i've been having have suffering from this awful pain in my legs for about six months now and i think it's a lot to do with posture but i am 68 you know and i've had five children and um, I'm quite a large person, so it could be something to do with my hip. But I do know that I can improve this by some natural things. I'm also taking wormwood as well. I got it for the animals, but I'm too taking it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Parasites. It's really bitter. <laughs> I shift them on it. I gave it to my little cat, and she attacked me. I then she took this massive, great big scratch on my hand. Hated it. It was just like. <laughs> Get that away. Well, that's what we're all about, really, isn't it? You know, we, look, we have looked into various foods and, you know, yeah, yeah, they got over the years. And but food, I can't, do, can't eat very much that. at all at the moment. If you buy vegetables, they go off really quickly. Broccoli's off in the fridge for a couple of days. But I have my own red peppers tonight. So nice. I waited a long time for them to go red. The long you know i think it's great that you actually escape from london jacks yeah i do yeah <laughs> going away for a week going away to cornwall for a week and coming back make made it feel more like home now you know mm -hmm. yeah it was nice to get back it was good to go away but it had that nice all the animals were pleased to see me and you know it's just felt like coming home and when i think of london now and how bad it was getting with the neighbors and the the oppress the the oppression. I mean, I can just walk, wander out there naked if I want to, and have done. But less of that. <laughs> <laughs> but there are a lot of drones and uh, things like that around here. You do get drones, helicopters, people flying about because they jump off the the, the plane. You know, so <laughs> not recommended. <laughs> Might look good from a height though. <laughs> like soft focus. <laughs> Worst track. <laughs> you know, I think people would be surprised how many of our team members have you know moved from a city to somewhere. We've nicer. all moved. We've all been moving about, haven't we? Yep. Yeah. Was moving and looking out for themselves. Well. Yes. Moving. Getting a garden and growing your own. And, yeah. You know, this is what all it's about, isn't growing. it? Growing. Yeah. Do more next year. I learned some lessons this year, but my spuds did all right. Yeah, look good then. Yeah, well, I'm going to dig up my front lawn. I'm determined to do it. And it's just sitting there, you know, just sitting yeah. there, just growing or being glared at by neighbours because I'm just growing it. I'm sure you. I'm sure you'll put it to good use. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it does get a lot of sun in the summer, mm -hmm. so I can veg it up, and I will veg it up. Mm. so yeah my 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 little um family drama at the moment my mum and dad both developed rapid onset dementia back in may um 
and I wasn't sort of informed about it in the family. I only found out by chance, really, uh, when I phoned up. I, I kept phoning up, but they weren't answering the phone. And then I phoned up and got my mum, and she just came out with these bizarre stories. And so I thought, oh, my God, what's going on with mum? So I phoned up, and, and I'd seen my mum and dad in April, and my mum had had slight sort of like memory problems and my but my dad was sound because at the time i said to my 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 sister my my brother i said i can see dad going on for ages i said and you know mum being the one we're going to have to keep an eye on so um after I, this conversation with my mum on the phone i phoned my brother and uh my brother's like us he's anti the thing and everything and he said, uh, I said, what the hell's going on? What's wrong with mum? And he went, dad's worse. I said, dad? And he said, yeah, ever since number five, just before his birthday. And then I realised that this had been going on for quite a while, for about a good month. And they'd all been starting to rally together. And they put up this family chat. And I went down and obviously things were deteriorating fast and um my brother assured me reassured me everybody was pulling their weight and it, according to this family chat everything was fine there were lots of thumbs up and people saying went round give dad a bit of dinner uh, blah blah weighed mum today so blah, blah all this thumbs up well done and then it transpires uh, rather than this sort of cooperative that i've been witnessing you know and sort of giving my support and I'll be down and wish I could help more and all this sort of thing because I'm miles away. I've got another sister in Australia who can't help and she's like really like racked with guilt and everybody else, all these sisters-in-laws and everything are all mucking in. There was no cooperative going on. My brothers had taken control of my dad's money and taken power of attorney and there was a huge like war going on between them with this rift and then people withdrew their help and just been watching this disaster folding on in front in front of me for the last god knows how long anyway mum and dad are now in respite they've been there a week and now dad's on end of life of care he just went downhill overnight yesterday it's just gone from bad to worse just it's like watching a bad movie unfold in front of me and there's been lots of doctors involved no no doctors have prescribed anything they haven't had a diagnosis so a whole pile of medicines wasn't even signed off that they should have received it's been an absolute farce and of course they've got to pay for it all themselves because my dad's been sitting like a leprechaun on a pot of gold all these years not giving us anything <laughs> just holding it all <laughs> but yeah it's not good it's not good it's just a bloody nightmare really and the thing is at the beginning of the thing like many of us here i became suddenly visionary and saw the whole future in front of me spoke to all my family and, and had to accept that i wasn't going to be able to see my mum and dad for quite a while because uh, my sister, her daughter, my two sister-in-laws and various members of their family, daughters, and are all working for the NHS. So, and they all live like on the doorstep of my mum and dad. So it was like an enclave, you can imagine. It's boxes of tests and masks, everything all over the place. Real, huh? so i was completely excluded when they did start to get ill and it's as if and i'm the oldest child i'm the oldest child and it's been quite a difficult thing to carry really well shouldn't you have a power of attorney jacks if you're the My eldest? i wanted the sons to have power of attorney he was very um, misogynistic oh. <laughs> <laughs> women had their place i was a huge disappointment <laughs> I was way too much of a independent soul. Yeah, I was a black sheep and a rebel, and um, yeah, yeah. So there's it's been very difficult because 
the people who ended up looking after my dad um, before he went into respite were the very people, very children who he neglected growing up, you know. As adults, he sort of mellowed a lot, but as a dad, he wasn't the best, you know. So everybody's trying to deal with all this sort of conflict around about duty and guilt and oh dear me, it's been really messy. See this um fast onset of dementia, Jax. You got any I've more done, information done, on that? I've done some um I've been doing a little bit of research on this rise in dementia that I'm seeing. There's care homes going up everywhere around here all these advertisements for uh, carers all the carers in this care home where my mum and dad are right now are either asian or polish it's very little english spoken there's not very medical many medical staff around very basic care these are what this is what i'm hearing from my sister i'm going on saturday um it's uh and uh, there's a lot of it, there was a huge rise in dementia. They're expecting a ridiculous figure by 2030. A big research project done, funded by Bill and Melinda Gates, no less. I fancy that, huh? Mm. So, yeah, I think it's um, years and years of pharmaceuticals and the last two years that have finished them off, really. Yeah. Sorry, just keeping in contact with them over the last two years they, they were and when i went to see them um they didn't have the same interest like my dad wasn't as interested in his crosswords he was like mm, i don't know i mean he's 92 mum's 88 but my mum seems to be enjoying herself in the care home she's sort of settled and um lording ladying it a bit you know um, enjoying the attention so i don't know i don't know how it's going to go it's just been a bit of a you know nightmare yeah. well, these awful brothers of mine one of whom is now on the verge of a nervous breakdown while the other one um just his whole focus is on the money that's his entire focus really But there's other stuff that I don't really want to talk about, you know, the more nefarious, suspicious <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Yeah. But I'm seeing a pair of very sort of still quite sprightly um, elderly people in April to see what's there now. My dad doesn't recognise any of us. None of us anymore, not even my mum. He's forgotten how to swallow. He's just dribbling, he's in nappies. That's since May. And he was all right, you know, he probably was moaning at the telly, as usual. And the elephant in the room is never talked about, you know. The thing. Yeah, exactly. Did you say he had five? Huh? Did you say he had five? Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my sister apparently took them up for the five of the practice nurse who just retired. She's a. She came out of retirement to. Um, do the thing Jesus. yeah they're really on it they're, it's crazy it's mental how people just forget you know from one month to the next mm. and you know the moment you try and tell someone that oh, I, I gave, I've had to give up but it's very difficult I, I gave up probably a year and a half ago I think now. <laughs> yeah it's sort of it's like you we're witnesses aren't we we are. We're witnesses to the end times and you just got to witness and stand on that middle pillar and it's a bloody nightmare. 
This is what you call a reset event. Yeah. Um, Nobody comes out unscathed. Luca has a question, FPV, for you. Okay, hold on. Let's have a look. Uh, where's he at? Oh, it's the red line off the east Antarctica. Red line. Oh, it's part of the landmass, uh, Luca. You know, that's where they've chopped the map, basically. If you follow the line straight up, you can see where it kind of matches where the map ends on the right-hand side. That's where they cut the map. Or it could just be, in, you know, an area by one of us, but that's roughly where they've chopped the map. To hide east and west. And then they rack what, that, what you can see there on the ball to make a globe. Google Earth shows you what it makes, but it takes algorithms to wrap all that around a ball and distorts hell out of it. Unwrapped, it, it looks like what you're looking at there. Line we, stretching yeah, out. Let's... I don't know if the line's stretching out. It shouldn't be there or not. It could be an error and I will be half and I'd have to check that. What are you talking about, the logo? Yeah, the if you look at the map and the grid on the screen there, on the Antarctica on the right hand side, it is like a red line sticks out a bit further oh, than the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'll double check that sometime, uh, Luca. But yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about it. We can't go and have a look at it and inspect it or measure it. <laughs> but yeah, you know, the, the map ends there only because that's where they cut it. Thanks for popping in, VN. Take care, mate. Later, VN. So, yeah, Jack, uh, sorry to hear about your bad news as well. Yeah, yeah well, sorry the, about that. The irony is. In about 2018, when I went down to see my sister, she was saying, oh, you know, we're going to have to all get together as a family at some point and talk about mum and dad. And I said, well, I said, she said they're going to have to go into a home at some point. And this was 2008, I think it was 19, 2018. So every time she lives on Portland and every time I went, I used to go to Portland and have a walk about, you know, recharge my batteries. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, no, I said, when it comes to that, I'm going to move in with them. And I had every intention of doing that. That was going to be my plan, to do what I did with this swap, but go to Weymouth. But the thing came, the imprisonment came. And then in September last year, I found out that, uh, my daughter was pregnant with a problematic pregnancy. And so I moved here be close to her and support her you know mm -hmm. and then all this blew up so it was like completely different game plan and apparently my brother had every intention of giving up his job temporarily and um, going in to give them the care but um, nobody had been going in at night and I was really concerned about that. I said, how are they at night? And my sister was saying, oh, they're fine. You know, they're okay when we're going in the morning. And then they started to find my dad, like, on the floor in the front room with, like, just his shirt on and weird stuff put all around the house. And so my sister stayed in one night and my brother stayed in the second night. And my sister said it was unbelievable. It was the worst night of her life. And my brother on the spot said, I will not be able to look after them. And within 24 hours, they were in the respite. They said my dad was shouting and screaming and bawling and there was aggression. And anyway, they've put them in separate rooms as well. It all sounds a bit draconian there. Two old people who are at the end of their lives. One minute they're, you know, with their feet up watching the telly and then three months, four months later, they're in, like, um, prison, really, waiting to die. 
with their two of their children squabbling over money. It's mad. This uh, research you said you've been looking into, then um, are you going to make a video about that? Also, the dementia. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to see that one. Yeah, I'm going to um, have a mm. look at it because uh, this care home thing is quite alarming. It's everywhere. Oh, when we've well, been driving around the country a little bit, we went to Glastonbury the other day and Salisbury and here and there and Cornwall. And all outside, all everywhere, it's like new care home going up, carers wanted. And it's going to be all these baby boomer people who've got animals and their own pets and all this stuff going on who can't look after these alzheimer dementia patients like elderly parents are going to have because it looks like it's just going to be the norm and everybody's accepting it they call it the thing fog i have a question so do you think the preservatives and the crap they put in our food have anything to do with dementia yeah, but the thing sped it up. Yeah, I think the thing is the catalyst, the the just the thing that does the the job, the final job. Okay. Reminds me of that sixteen hundred reset, the Black Death. Yeah. It came and went, didn't it? Mm. Yeah. EW has a question. Paris. No, I don't know anything about Paris. Well, any sacred, any sacred geometry there, um, just refer to our research to understand what its meaning is. Because they all like to depict this sacred geometry everywhere, like they own it. They don't, yeah. want, you, they don't want you to know about it, but our ancestors were well aware of it because they depicted it everywhere. So they've stole all that information. I know there's a lot of the Louvre they got, because, because they've got that pyramid, and then if you go in the pyramid, there's another pyramid upside down inside the pyramid or something. Yeah. You know, I would, our research decodes all that, so yeah. you know, it really shows me a picture of what you're looking at and we'll tell you what it represents. There's always queues at those places. And, uh, what, we've, what we've actually built over the last six years is the template to decode all this. That's what we we've been doing we know the template now we created our own template of how we decode all this and it works perfect yeah i've got loads of ideas for videos i've got so many so many i think you should do a few lives as well jacks you are i think you should do a few lives like what you're doing now yeah i'd like to do lives i have thought about it no more thinking now <laughs> i do a lot of thinking Baron. Yeah. it's my problem i live in my head a bloody gemini it's a nightmare a lot of shit but everyone's got to share I'm a nightmare. <laughs> so what are we going to do today <laughs> yeah yeah any museums you know you're going to look at them in a different light once you've been through our research you will really see what you what it actually represents you're not just looking at ornaments anymore you're looking at what it represents that's the important thing what it actually represents and it all relates to the creator's glory and how it works it's not satanic as some people are calling it it is the way of the world it's how it works and that's the sacred geometry it belongs to it It's all about how it's used, isn't it? It's like everything. It could be they use. It's like um, this Janus thing. I mean, Janus is just the two facedness of it all. They tell us one thing, and then they do another with everything. Everything they do, they tell us they're doing it for our good, and they're doing it for, for our bad. Everything is the other way round. Yeah. We, it's like they they the right giving us with the right hand, while with the left hand they're just wiping everything out. It's just. 
the weirdest well, they're not inversion. Actually, yeah. They're not actually telling us, they're signalling each other. You know, yeah. they, they run all the nations now, so they're signalling the nations what their plans are, really. That's what they're really doing. It's just wearying. It's it was it's where where where's you out when you see it so clearly. I mean, I haven't seen any television for for a long time. And then when we went to Cornwall, there was no internet, but they had telly with like the basic channels, and it was awful. I was just, I was just in some in a sort of shock seeing how bad it was. The basic channels were just eighties repeats of the really like real crap like heartbeat you know just rubbish and i saw ancient aliens there i thought oh that'll do a bit of ancient aliens will do but every five minutes it was like five minutes of adverts and it was like these inane adverts the bbc is so damned down i can't watch it I, it's just they talk it's like watching they talk to you like you're five years old yeah they do don't they? everything Oh, even if it's a serious subject, they have this bumpy, pumpy music. Like, meanwhile, Brian has been looking, talking with with Rachel in the garden. Bum, 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 bum. For fuck's sake, get on with it, you know? Yeah, like, like, play, like play a school, isn't it? Yeah. So I just want to get a bit of raw, bloody research and trying to get it on the internet, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. I said because it was like so remote there. And it's quite good, actually, because I'm going to do a video about this. You know, I, I, I did the rainbow. I, I saw the rainbow. And I could see that it was a local rainbow. And in the centre was this church. So on our last day, we went over and found the church. And it's near Holywell. And there's two Holy Wells in Holywell. One of them is on the golf course. And the other one is just amazing. And it's like a hidden wonder that you can only access it at low tide. And it's in the cliffs. And... It's like mineral water and all the minerals have coloured all the rocks, all these wonderful rainbow colours. This is stuff they don't tell you about this. This was just over the road from where we were staying as well. Anyway, I got back and I got on Google Earth and I found out where we were in Perrinport. Then I worked out where the rainbow was and I thought, but it was a lot closer. I could see how close it was. It was like really close. And then I saw St. Pyrin's Church. St. Pirin's Oratory, and they're two ruins that are just between Holywell and where we were. And um, when I looked at them on the map, I thought, bloody hell, this is this is where it was over. It's over this thing. Yeah, so it's just a marker then on the yeah, side. It was yeah. over St. Pirin's, and St. Pirin is the patron saint of Cornwall. And there's this crazy story about him coming over from Ireland and they, no, he got he got thrown into the sea off Ireland, but miraculously survived and came upon the beach at Perrinpoor and built his chat oratory on the sands. Load of rubbish, uh, miles from anywhere. No, the Perrinpoor ba barely existed. Nothing existed. So there must be a whole town or something around there under un, under all that sand. So I'm thinking there was probably some sort of mini event all around there, created these dunes and everything. Yeah. It's um, the angels doing what they do, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it got, it's got this crazy weather there. And I got some nice video footage, and I, I'll, I'll get that together. I've got it all sort of collated, but I've got a few like that. It's just a case of getting the narration down, and it's just getting I get so diverted by this family stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to mute because I have this thing. I have to be at at 6 o'clock, but I want you all to continue. So I'm just going to mute, and when you guys are done, you can just hang up. Yeah, okay, well. Okay, well. Yeah. So it was great talking to you guys. I just had this Yeah, it was six, good, really good hearing your story as well. Send yeah. me some written my our love. Yeah, my love. love Thank too. you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I will definitely talk to you guys later. Maybe we can, you know, do our usual Sunday stream again. That would be awesome. Yeah. This yeah, week. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. hopefully we can get that together. <laughs> but updates on. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just mute and you guys can hang up whenever you're done. That way the thing can keep going. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll okay. Well. All well, right. Well. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, Have a good All night. Right. Yep. You too. Bye bye. Bye.
and a big double hug off Luca. <laughs> mm -hmm.